We're back with our favorite Kansas State coach, Chris Lowry, uh, back with us on Coffee with Chris, of course. And, you know, last time we talked, we, we nearly talked for over an hour, and we got a lot of info out there for, you know, all the fans. I know the fans always love to see your face talking about um, some K-State hoop. So I'm, I'm glad you're back here to talk with me again, Coach. No, I'm glad to be back. I mean, it's, I mean, these are always fun, and it's always a way to – to get an in-depth kind of look at what's going on. And I think um, a lot of videos coming out from the camp that our fans are seeing, um, you know, from our K-State men's basketball account. Yep. Um, you know, I think the, the guys are working really hard. And, and I think you see in those videos that it's, it's back to, you know, Bruce Weber, the teacher, you know. Mm -hmm. We're back to just coaching and um, – and, and less the, the mental wellness and less the psych, psychiatrist and, you know, less all the other stuff out, off the court um, with the world opening up a little bit. Our guys yeah. actually have lives and they can, you know, go to a movie and they can go and sit out in a restaurant and not worry if the coaches are going to call them and tell them to go home right now. <laughs> we heard you're in a restaurant, you know, stuff like that. Don't get your food to go. Like just being a nag like that. I mean, I, I know it had to drive them crazy because I know it would drive me crazy if, you know, if when I was that age, if, if you know, an adult kept calling me, asking me where I was, are you in your room? Um, where's your roommate? You know, make sure you guys have your mask in your car. Do you have masks in your car? Do you have masks, you know, in your bucket that they carry in practice? Do you have an extra mask? Like, these are things we did every single day, and I know it had to be old. And, I, and people don't think about our whole thing with Coach was being super safe with our kids and with, with our support staff, you know, cause obviously, um, you know, our administrative assistant Bailey was, was pregnant at the time. And we wanted to make sure she was, she was safe. And, and, you know, you know, all of us have kids, you know, some of us, yeah. you know, from the trainer to myself, obviously coach Weber's grandkids and him not being able to see them. So, and our, even our own players not seeing their parents for long stretches of time and, only being able to FaceTime and, 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 and do Zoom stuff. So it was, it was a crazy, crazy year, but now it's back to normal. We're back to, you know, actually getting a coach. And that's what's exciting. You know, I mean, I want to talk about team stuff. You know, this is what these are all about. But first, let's talk about what it is like to be back out on the road recruiting for the first time in a, in a summer. I saw you in Chicago recently, posted up with Jay Poles and D Brown, you and Coach uh, Weber. How was that? It was like a reunion almost. Like so, so many guys we've coached were there, whether they were college coaches or high school coaches, former our, our former players, and it was fun, to, you know, to see D and to hear his stories. And like you know, when you see guys that are special, you light up immediately when you see them, because you know you went through something with them and something special came out of it with them. Mm -hmm. Just when I, when I immediately saw saw Jacob. You know, I was like, oh, we got it. We just immediately, we were both talking to other people and boom. <laughs> like, nah, we like, you know, it's like, what's up? Like, you know, and it was mm -hmm. like that, you know, and it was like, give Nigel my number, you know, we got to, we got to connect. And like, you know, his reach back was great. You know, him, him wanting to touch base with, with who's here. Um, because the last time he did it, he helped raise Barry and, and Cam and Dean. And those mm -hmm. guys all came back and, um, you know, that's important. For, for our guys to know that, that the greatest players that ever played here care about them and their success uh, because it is their alma mater and they want, they want to see success. Speaking of raising and Jacob Poland, you know, that comes out a lot. When, he, when is that banner getting raised for his, his jersey oh, retirement? I mean, there's tons of guys that need to be retired, you know? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, they want to do it when Jake's done so we can really do it right. And, We've talked about throwing about it around stuff like doing a in sometime in the summer, early summer in June of doing a alumni game where none of these guys are actually playing and get them to come back and do an alumni game and do a mm -hmm. jersey jersey raising then. Uh, but if anybody deserves to have their have the have their number put you know put old number zero up in that rafters, it's definitely him. Uh, and and you know he just shared with me some things, you know for Nigel, that that's important. Mm -hmm. this year he's a freshman you know and and now he's going to make a jump and and Jacob talked about bees was there and now I jumped us out now he's not there I got a different dude guarding me my mm -hmm. life's a little bit different I have to adjust and change my thoughts and my behaviors to being an alpha guy you know an alpha dog 
I think Nigel at times didn't realize he was the alpha dog at times. Um, and he has to understand what he can do mm-hmm. and what he can provide for us and his value to not only in, in, in our team, but against our opponent. Absolutely. I mean, one, I, you keep bringing up alma mater and stuff. It makes, reminds me of one more thing to talk about before we jump into team stuff is what do you think of this, you know, purple and black getting back together. Some of your guys on that squad, you know, all K-State dudes on that squad. That's, that's exciting to get them back in Wichita playing with each other. First of all, I love purple and black uniforms. I know I get mad at it, but I love the black and purple joints. I love the gray joints. You know, those are those are player favorites. You know what I mean? Yep. Like when you when you see kids, like the number one thing kids when they come into a, on a recruiting visit and they see those lavenders, it's over. They don't care <laughs> about the other jerseys. They don't care about the other colors. I want I, I want to play in those. You know, and that's what it's about. It's about what's eye candy to them. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes we could get caught up. We're old and we get stuck in our ways. That's not our colors, but whatever attracts kids is what attracts them. Yep. You know, shiny stuff, our practice facility, all the new stuff, the bells and whistles, they like. Now, mm-hmm. not, of course, we're not going to – like, we got six different uniform combinations. So we're always going to have purple and white, you know, all the, the dark purples and, and, the, and the change of change of pace with some of the other things. But I think it's cool when you can see your jersey and script with cats on it or wildcats or the throwback wildcat, you know. I mean, it's, it's yeah. awesome. Because I think so many people of different eras had that. And I think it's, a, it's kind of an appreciation to them throwing back to when in the 70s, this is what the uniform looked like. You know, we can wear that uniform. And then in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, we can change up and, and change years and, and decades and, and different um, K-State fans. They've done a really good job with those jerseys and stuff. Um, now let's jump into team stuff. I mean, you already touched on it, but you're back to a normal schedule. You can have, you know, shoot arounds and everything else, practices. You know, how's that combined all together looking? I think the beauty of it is we're in, we're in the kind of feeling out phase with those guys. And I'm not talking about us. We know we, we've really studied what we have, mm-hmm. but it's between them. Like, you know, when you see Nigel and then you see Marquise and you're like, oh, I can shoot. Oh, I can shoot too. Like the feeling out of them on each other, mm-hmm. trying to know what, what they, I've heard about you. Yeah, yeah, no, I heard about you. And now that competition <laughs> is great. Yeah, And then you see Ish, and now you see these other guys, Ish can, you know, oh, he can score. Well, I better raise my game. You know, then you see Davion, and Casey's actually back and getting in drills and actually playing some half-court stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you see him and his big physicality, and you see Davion's just a, a big man. Uh, and you saw, like today, you know, Davion thought he was, had a, you know, you know, I'm going to dunk on Casey and Casey met him up top. We like meet him at the heavens, big fella. And, mm-hmm. and that's what it's about. The competition of if you're going to try me, I'm going to try you. And, and that's what's important. That's when you have a chance to get better. Um, I think Mike McGurl, you know, seeing Mark Smith and the competition and the uh, you're not going to one up me is, mm-hmm. is right now is very big. And you want that competition, comp- competition, but it's healthy. And coach keeps telling them every day, if, you, if you're competing with your teammates, you're going to be bitter. If you compete against yourself, you're going to get better. And that's what we can it's, – it's great to have competition, but it's got to be the right way and understanding that we're all on one team. And I may get you today, mm-hmm. but I know, you know tomorrow you can damn well get me back too. And so that's, that's where we are with them as far as practice and as far as, as, as guy trying to compete at the highest level. And of course, they're, you know, the new guys don't always do everything we ask them to do right. Yeah. But, you know, they play college basketball and the instincts and the experience in other facets of just basketball without our system are there. And, and that's, that's what's good to see. And, you know, everyone's interested about these newcomers because this is really the first, you know, look at how they're looking. So let's touch on them first. And you brought up, you know, they're still learning. But let's start with Mark Smith first. You know, your guy, your transfer you brought in. Uh, is he one of the guys, you know, newcomers that's more further along than others based off experience? Well, Mark's old, just like Mike. Like, those dudes have played a lot of college basketball games yeah. and the experience level of being in hostile environments. I mean, honestly, if you look, our new guys never played in a hostile environment. You know, Mike and Mark have both played, obviously, in, in, in separate high major leagues. They mm-hmm. played in the, some of the best places you could possibly play at, uh, whether Mark was in the Big Ten or the SEC. So understanding that environment can have an effect on you. Our young guys have no idea what that means. They don't 
get it what Bramlage is like. They don't get it what going to Iowa State Hilton Magic is like. You know, they don't get it what, you know, Kansas is like in there and with a lot of people when, when it's sold out. So having having those guys be able to just be worker bees, I mean, and, and to go about your business and just work, that's what Mark Smith and that's what Mike, those older guys are just working. They're just trying to compete and be at their best every day. And, and, and it's, it's, it's shown in our team yeah. with everybody's approach to being on time, being there early, getting up extra shots, staying after, um, coming and watch film. Even if you weren't here, watch what we're trying to teach you and go from there. So now, I mean, you brought it up a little bit earlier. You, talking about Marquise Noel, another guy like Nigel uh, that can really shoot the ball from outside. What's that like in practice? And just, I mean, what is the kind of energy Marquise Noel brings to the, the team? Well, I mean, the thing is he's played, he has experience, but you know, people will say not at this level, but when you look, when he played outside of his league against other people, he had big, big games. And, and, you know, he, he really showed that he can compete at a high level. You know, the biggest thing for us, is to they, they to let them know they're brothers and this is togetherness this is something that they got to understand that together we are an unbelievable point guard monster yep. you know and we have to stay focused on being that and they both have their own strengths that can help us be good and we have to focus on not trying to make nigel be marquise and not trying to make marquise be nigel they have to be themselves which is completely different but they can provide something for us that help us really win games. The last newcomer that I expect to really, you know, be a, a key piece for this coming season is Mar uh, Ismail Musad. You know, you call him Ish. What is, what is he like? You know, another, you know, stretch four. What's he been like in practice? Well, he told me it's Swish. So I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so Swish, um, no, he can, he can make tough shots. And I think that's the, and it's and it's that stretch combo. It's not mm -hmm. even really, you know, it's like a forward. Yeah. You know, we, Dean dribbled. Dean did a lot of things. He 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 initiated a lot of stuff as that combo forward that we like. But we now we have size again. And he it's just six nine. He's got length. He's a tall guy. He can jump up and make a play. Um, he'll be able to you know initiate stuff and pass. Like Coach Weber's system needs a guy from that position who's a threat. And, and, mm -hmm. and really has an IQ because you, you do so much stuff with that position, having a high IQ and the ability to make plays, not just scoring the basketball. Absolutely. So, you know, let's stick with the newcomers. I want to talk about the freshmen. Just, you know, touch on what you see from Logan Landers, you know, and, and Max and Edwards, both of them in practice. Well, Max is still out with the, you know, he had the rod yeah, putting his shin. So he's, he's still out, but. Mm -hmm. Max is put together. And like when you look at him, you like, man, like that kid at six five, six five is rocked up. I mean, he's a Mack truck. You know, he's very, very thick. I mean, and we know he's explosive off the ground. You know, he's gonna bring a level of of the junkyard dog toughness we need at that wing spot, that short corner, the, those those transition runs. You know, we need that. You know, mm -hmm. back in our program, like Xavier can get out and run, and you know, we can throw lobs to him run stuff for him to catch and make plays in the air. I think, it, I think uh, Max will be that for us, but Logan, Logan is low and, and he's going to, and plus Max is very tough. So there won't, he won't take plays off you know, and we know that, that he will compete. So, but, but Logan is a dude who Logan can score it different ways. Um, I think as his confidence grows, we're going to see a completely different dude and a, and a, and a guy who people are going to love. Mm -hmm. to watch play because he's a maximum effort dude and he competes and he's got a lot of stuff to his game he's just got to adjust to the pace and the quickness and the strength of college basketball but once he does that I think I think he could really help us you brought up the strength part so before we get into you know the rest of the team talk about AJ Kloss you know coming over from the women's basketball program and you know being taking over for Ben O'Donnell Talk about what Ben O'Donnell, what leaves with Ben O'Donnell and what comes in with A.J. Claus. Well, you know, Benito was, man, that's our guy now. You know, he, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears, bled purple through and through with us. And tough day, man. You know, hard to, hard to, hard to keep the tears from flowing when that guy told us. And we thought he was just joking. Like, what are you talking about? Stop playing. And, no, it was real. And we were like, what? 
think we it was almost one of those dudes we lost somebody from our family so it wasn't just our strength coach you know it was it was somebody it was much deeper than that and we were really connected with him um you know and greatly missed in his family um aj is gone from the dude we used to walk and say what's up aj and just keep it moving to now oh now we gotta now this is our guy you know and and it's it's so different because you know he's obviously different from ben but he's still we you know worker bee we gotta have our program is about that mm -hmm. and being worker bees and just work and, and just play hard um and embody that in the weight room and from the weight room that translates to, to how we play and and in a short period of time aj's really embodied that and really pushed our guys to the limit where it had to be this year um, we knew we had to push them extremely hard to get where we needed to because nigel the freshmen never got they never got smacked in the summer like most freshmen all of our freshmen have gotten when they first show up they came and were in their rooms you know they came and we were on zooms and you can't develop a culture in zoom it's not possible because the nuances of actually doing some real live work don't happen when you watch it or you listen to somebody tell you you know a term that you've never heard before but expected to know it when it comes time to compete absolutely so um let's get into more you know of the roster you only got one guy one guy not in manhattan right now but he's you know back in his home country of angola uh, preparing for, you know, qualifiers for the Olympics in Celta Miguel. How cool is that? Well, you know, we know that he's a good player, and his country does too. So, I mean, it wasn't a situation where he was a shoe in He had to go make the team. He yeah. was not a guy they penciled in and said, he's already on the team. He went and got him a spot, and that's where you appreciate. And the first thing he did was text, you know, Coach Weber and say, oh, this coach is crazy like you. <laughs> you know, long <laughs> practice, Coach, long practices. <laughs> and so he was like, you know, I appreciate what you've done for me, Coach, because I'm, I'm here and I'm ready. These are grown men. And a lot of stuff that you tried to teach me is actually coming, you know, to fruition right now when I'm with these older men and I'm the youngest over here playing. So let's let's move on, you know, and talk about more of these dudes that are actually in town, guys you've been able to work with this summer. Start with Nigel Pack, you know, the superstar, the K State superstar for this basketball team. I think I think Nigel, um, he has a he has a companion and a competitor every day in Marquise. You know what I mean? I think they they really feed off each other and they really compete. Like in all of our drill work and all of our things and our shooting. Time shooting makes misses. They are going at it. They're they're trying to, to 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 make to see who's the better shooter. And and anytime when you and and you know when you are christened like you're going to be this, like everybody has done, Nigel. He has you got to be so careful about having a sophomore slump, and that's what we're trying to prevent him from having, because we want him to understand the target is even bigger now. Mm -hmm. uh, people knew you were good last year, and they kind of still in the beginning didn't put that guy on you but by the end that guy was on him you know to try to stop him and try to stop what he was able to do and how he was able to help us but I think Nigel's going to be definitely stronger I mean his voice will definitely be heard more because that's something he had to work on as an as a point guard being the command center and saying stuff to everybody and it, it ain't always going to be nice mm -hmm. and it can't always be friendly um, so I think that's his biggest learning curve is the leadership side of, uh, of being a sophomore. It ain't, it ain't you. It's not your first rodeo, man. You gotta, you gotta act accordingly. So, but you know, I mean, that touch, that three, whenever he shoots it, we think it's going in. Um, obviously he has to get to the free throw line. He knows that. Um, and that's something that he's really concentrated and worked on. And, you know, we're excited because, when you look at things in the, in the landscape of, rec of, of, of guys jumping in the portal, our core young boys could have dipped. They could have said, you know what? We lost, we're out. But I think they saw at the end, oh, if we do it this way, this is what it, oh, this is what it looks like. And, and how we played and how we finished helped all those guys understand that now nah, the coaches were really helping us and, and, and we can win. You know, we just got to continue to be locked in how we are. So I think that credit to him and, you know, obviously wanting to be a good player mm -hmm. and not running from that. 